it's Carrie. How are you all doing? I hope everyone's well. Um, I just realized I got like yellow paint on my hand from earlier. Sorry about that. So let's talk about One Book July. Um, as I said in my intro video, that was abundantly unclear. I apologize for that. Um, I did end up having um, more of a cold than I thought I had um, after flying home. And I didn't realize till after the fact how foggy of a brain I had. So what I am doing for One Book July is talking about systems. My challenge for the month is I want to journal every day, first of all. Um, a lot of that is stuff I don't show. So I didn't feel like that was really going to work for my challenge as far as what I could share with everybody. So that's more of a personal challenge, but I wanted to talk about streamlining my system where I can. I've challenged myself this month to maybe change some things about my system so that they serve me better, if that makes sense. And I felt like One Book July might be a good time to do that um, because then we could see other people's systems and how they worked. And a lot of people have asked how my system worked, so I thought it was a good time to show it because my original idea was to talk about different planner systems. Like, let's challenge ourselves for, say, a week or whatever, or for the month, we're going to use a different planner system, like when we did Bullet Journal for One Book July. However, after giving that some thought, I realized that I don't know enough about other planner systems to be, to feel comfortable talking about them. I didn't want to misspeak or give misinformation or anything like that trying to talk about a different planner system, okay? And I know dismantling my system for the month, that's one thing we've always said about One Book July. If it's not broken, don't fix it, right? Don't dismantle your whole planning system, especially a lot of us as planner people like if you dismantle this big bad things can happen right so we don't want that for anybody and I know if I dismantle this I things will be in a shambles okay so I thought we would talk about building a system and my challenge to me myself through this month is what can I streamline in here what can I change kind of the system would still work the same, but what about the mechanics of it? And to me, the mechanics are the pieces that make the system work, right? If the system is a machine, the mechanics are the gears and the pulleys and the controls, things like that. Maybe I'm the only one who sees it like that. I will own that. So I have a big long list right over here about what I need in my planner to make my system work. What are the things, and like I've said, I am, I am not young. I have been using a planner for a very long time. And I wanted to identify what are the things that I know I need to make my system work. Okay, sorry about that. Had to walk away for a moment. So what I need in my system is a little handful of things. Now I've tried many things and you don't, in, in how I get these things in my planner is part of the mechanics, right? Like what inserts I use, things like that. It doesn't really matter. It's a question of the system itself, okay? So what I need most of all, above pretty much all else, is I need a seamless flow of information. I need to be able to put information into my planner and never worry about it getting lost because I don't know where I put it. And I need to be able to get information out of my planner without giving any thought to where I put it. Okay, so all of the mechanics, all of the pieces in here are what make that happen. I need a seamless flow of information from section to section. So I need the information in the monthly to be pertinent to what goes on on a weekly basis. I need the information on the weekly to be pertinent to what goes on on a daily basis. I need the pertinent things from the daily pages as the day is done to flow back into the weekly if necessary or the monthly if necessary or the projects if necessary. I need tasks to be able to be pulled quickly from my project section to be on usually a weekly list so that I can chip away at projects little by little. Okay, does that make sense? The, the information in and out as far as I don't want to think about where to put something so that I won't lose it and I don't want to think about where I put it when I need to go back in and retrieve it and a seamless flow of information amongst the sections, how they interwork. Okay, that's my biggest thing. I, if I don't have that, this whole thing is pointless because that means I'm working for it and it's not working for me. Okay, I need it to work for me. That's its job. <laughs> I want to put as little brain power as possible into capturing information 
and I want to put as little brain power as possible into retrieving it when I need it. Now, part of the whole system is digital, okay? My biggest thing digitally is the quick capture of information. So something pops in my head that we need on the grocery list. Uh, or I take the backup of it out of like the pantry or the closet, the hallway closet. I, you know, we have backups for like allergy medicine and shampoo and stuff like that. When I take that backup out, I need to put it on the grocery list. And I will literally hit my button, tell my watch, add shampoo to the grocery list. It's done. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to run and write it down. It's done. So that is one way that digitally quick capturing things makes everything work a lot better. Keeps my brain as decluttered as I can get it, but maybe I can get it more decluttered. It's another challenge for myself, isn't it? Another thing is the drafts app. Now I have it on my watch. It's this little symbol right here. When I tap it, it immediately opens a draft. I can hit the microphone, say what I want to say. Drafts is an app that when you open it, it just immediately goes to a clean page and you can type or speak whatever you want. So if I get an idea, um, and I want to get it out of my head real quick. This happens a lot when I'm driving. Um, I can just tap it, you know, speak what I want to speak. I don't have to look at it. I don't have to really, you know, pay it any attention. I can just talk. And I'm so I'm focusing on driving. I'm not distracting myself from that. But if I don't do that, I promise you, whatever it is that I'm feeling I need to remember, it'll be gone. Now, that's if I'm, oh, I should talk about this in that video. Or I've been toying with... Um, designing um, printable sticky notes and I would think oh that's a real good idea for a sticky note so I would pop it into the drafts app or I would use my reminders and again same thing I just hit the button and say remind me blah 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 right so if I think oh that's right we need to um, I need to add bedding to Jack's dorm room list, right? Because I have a list going for my son who's going away to college next month. So I would, instead of even putting that in the drafts app, I would figure, okay, I'll be home. Let's say I'm out and about. I'll be home two hours from now. So I just tap it and just say, you know, tell Siri, remind me in two hours, Jack's bedding. I'll know that it's supposed to be for the dorm list. Um, if it's something that's lengthier, you know, oh, I just thought of I want to design a sticky note that has this at the top and then this at the bottom and blah, 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 blah. You know, that I will just dump into the drafts app because I have that open multiple times a day and I'll see it sitting in the list. Um, the other thing that goes on digitally is just our large family calendar. We have one calendar that everybody's calendars feed into just so that we can see what is going on, all of us together. Our grocery list works the same way. Everybody has that same shared grocery list, so any of us can use our phones or watches, whatever, and say add blah, blah, blah to the grocery list. So that's the digital portion, okay? Um, as far as in here, what I know that I need it to do for me and what I need in here to make those things happen is first of all a yearly. Now I used to have a yearly that was like for the entire year for all, obviously a yearly would be for the entire year. What I mean to say is I used to use a yearly to kind of capture all different kinds of information, kind of pre-planning type of stuff. Now what I have learned is I don't necessarily need that for just miscellaneous information, for all kinds of information. What I do like it for is finances, and my husband's travel schedule. I, I like, it's kind of like having a digital calendar like ours where all of our calendars dump into one big calendar, right? But I can filter that. I can go, okay, I just wanna see Clayton's calendar. So I can just high, you know, select his calendar. Everybody else's will kind of mute out. They didn't delete or anything like that, but it will pull everybody else's off and just leave his on. I can filter the results, right? That's kind of how I view my husband's travel schedule for work and the finances. It's me kind of filtering information out of the normal monthly calendar like that. And I'm, and instead of all of this business, I just have say his travel schedule on a pullout for the year, right? And that allows me to fill it in, in here when the season starts. Okay. I usually do because the break in the year from, you know, new year's, from one year to the next doesn't fall on a calendar like this because it's dated for 2022, right? So I have from January through the end of this last season and then when we get the schedule for this current season, then the first half basically of that season will go on here. But then I have his schedule. If I ever need to see it separate, 
I have it separate. I could go through when I get the schedule and put it on my monthly pages, right? Because I do that anyway. As I set up the month, I pull the information from that schedule and I put it onto here. But as you can see, it's also on here with all kinds of other things. And it can get messy. It can get lost. So I like being able to filter it so I can just see the one thing, okay? Finances is another one that I keep separate. I did used to keep finances on my monthly calendar. I did it for years. I now like doing it like this. I put the date that something is going to be withdrawn. I have a little abbreviation for what it is, the amount. I highlight the date over here just to kind of make it stand out for me. And then any unplanned for expenses go over here. So I have a nice little overview of the entire year that I have filtered out from all of this business with more information right? It has more information on it because it has the amounts and things on it. And I never put that on my monthly calendars. I was putting it on a separate insert. So my bills were both on my monthly calendars and in a separate insert with all of that dollar amount, date due, you know, unexpected expenses type of information. Well, I can condense all that into one insert. So I did. Okay. So that is one thing I need. I need yearlies for my finances and the game schedule. I need monthlies. I prefer to have the whole year of monthlies. I like the monthly for a nice overview of what is going on for the month. So I put, you know, upcoming appointments, um, the kids with whom I share my car, I share my car with two of my kids. So their work schedules go on here. The kids who are still in school Monday through Friday through the school year, a set schedule. I don't put those school schedules on here. Okay. Um, I will usually put my school schedule on here at the beginning of the semester just so that I adjust to the new schedule. Once I don't need it anymore, I stop writing it on here. Um, and that's, you know, that I, I may not need to do coming up again. Um, so this is all out of the ordinary schedule things. Um, my husband's game schedule, due dates for like papers or exams, a monthly task list, Let's see, where do I want to go? Let's go to July. So there's this month. So um, my kids work schedules because we share the car um, or I need to drop them off and pick them up, one or the other. Dentist appointments, um, quarterly goals. <clears throat> if I put quarterly goals in a separate space, I've learned that about myself. If I put them in a separate space, I forget about them. I had a section, I've had many planners in which I had a goals section where I had goals for the year, then quarterly goals. I just will not look at them. I have to keep them where I'm active in my planner, right? And I'm sure if I did a better job of creating the habit of looking at those sections, I would, but I, I wasn't doing that. So I'm moving them here. Um, projects for the month, this gets pulled from here and the project section, that's that flow of information, right? Um, little memory keeping in my months too. I like to have shows I've watched and books I've read and podcasts I've listened to. I'm not always good about doing that either and I always kick myself. So it's not really a need, but it's definitely a want. Um, so that is kind of what I need out of my monthlies. My weeklies, I like having the full year of weeklies. I definitely do not need the full year of weeklies, but I truly do like having it. Kind of setting this planner up, my whole idea was I want all of the pertinent stuff for one year in one book, right? I don't need to keep anything from the dailies. If something really notable happens on a certain day that I need to keep handy or I feel might be relevant beyond the life of this book being in this planner, I will make note of it on the monthly or the weekly, most times on the monthly. Um, so that was my point was I liked having the months for the whole year and the weeks for the whole year and project space for the whole year all in one. And then I don't have to change any of that. I don't have to move it. It's set up. It's done. So my weeklies, I like to have or I need to have the daily schedule for each person for whom I am responsible, okay? So like the kids who are in school Monday through Friday, their schedules are the same times, Monday through Friday, every day. I don't put that on the monthly, but I put it on the weekly because I am responsible for making it happen. My class schedule goes on the weekly. Um, day specific tasks, due dates, a weekly task list. Um, trackers we'll talk about in a moment. <laughs> um, that's what I need on my weekly. I need all of the schedules and tasks that I am personally responsible for. Okay. Then, oh, and that's another way I use digital. My finances, the due dates and whatnot, 
I keep in my reminders inbox. So I will get a reminder. It shows up in the calendar on my phone. I'll get a reminder on my watch. So I have them marked on the finance page in here. I adjust the due dates every month accordingly. I get reminded, not a big deal, right? So I sometimes I'll still throw them on the weekly, but it kind of depends. The weeklies got pretty, pretty crowded and I realized I wasn't even using it on the weeklies since I had it on my phone anyway, so I stopped doing it. Um, my dailies, I need the daily schedule broken down by pick up and drop off or drop off and pick up. So let's see, Friday, April 8th. So let's go to, I have um, in the middle of making a bookmark and I stuck it in there and it's kind of messing with us. So let's look at, let's look at Monday, April 11th. Okay. So that was his school schedule, that was his school schedule, I had that class, that was his school schedule, and he had to work that night. So if he started school at 7.30, I need to leave at 7.15 to drop him off. If he starts school at 9.50, I needed to leave at 9.40 to drop him off. Okay, I had an exam that day at 10.30. He's off school at two, so I need to leave at 1.45 to pick him up. You see how it works? I just have the list of where I need to be when and then tasks below it. I need both of those in my dailies. And I thought I had another one that was a really good example. Yeah, okay, Monday, April 4th, he has school at those times. He has school at those times. I had stats class, he has school at those times. Um, he had a Zoom call for university for next year and he has to work at that time, okay? So in my daily for that, he started at 7.30, I needed to leave at 7.15 to drop him off. These are all the same as the one we just looked at. I had to run to Target this day. So I needed to make sure I made time to do that. I didn't have it over here, but it popped up that I should probably do it because this was a day I only had one class and not two. This was the only day during the week that I had one class and not two. So it was a good time between getting out of this class and having to go at 1.45 to pick him up. I could see, okay, I knew this class was out at 11.45. So that gave me two hours that I could go run errands. So any errands I needed to run, I ran in that time. Listing my times out for the day helped me see that. It doesn't become a mad rush of, oh my gosh, when am I gonna make time to do that? I can see when I need to leave places to make these things happen so I can drop people off and pick them up and I can slot my, my tasks in between there. I had to run up to the registration office at school and I had to go to Target. So I got out of my stats class, I ran up to the registration office at school, I went to Target and ran my errands, I had to go there, I stopped at home and dropped stuff off, and then I left home at 1.45 to pick him up from school. You see how that works? That's that flow of information from here, my monthly or my weekly task list, and here. One of the tasks for that month was handle the Easter stuff. I knew that this week I should probably get that done. So it's, it's under here, but you can't see it. But under there, I have written, you know, Easter stuff. So this was a good day to do it. Okay, that's that flow of information. It was a monthly task that became a weekly task in the week that was the best week to do it, became a daily task on the day that it was the best day to do it. I need space for projects in my setup. I do them a couple of different ways. Um, as you saw in my monthly, I have sticky notes up here right now. Um, I recorded a January to June flip through of this that I need to get posted for you all. Um, I do the same steps for videos every time, but when I am in a position like I am now where I have multiple videos recorded, multiple videos in different stages of being complete and ready to post, I like to have a sticky note for each one so I can keep track of what on earth step did I leave off on, right? Um, the projects for the month. These I might go ahead and write down on paper, but a lot of times at the beginning of the month I don't. I don't know how long my miscellaneous task list might get, so it's nice to have it on a sticky note for now. My quarterlies, I usually write those down for the month as well, but I'm kind of toying with leaving them on a sticky note and then filling these boxes in as a progress bar as I get those things done. Okay, so that is how um, projects fall into the monthly because again, this information filters into the weeklies, which filters into the dailies. Now, my projects themselves, several of the ones that are in here right now are from school. So they are the due dates for each class basically for last semester. Um, I also have um, a section for one of the boys. So we had some stuff we had to do for his scholarship. I just put it on there. I had space left on that sticky note and I needed a real high level, like the five things I needed to get done to have his graduation party. Put it on there when it popped in my head. My little charm keeps slipping over. And can we just take a moment to appreciate this charm from Charmed Goods? Can we just for a moment? Seriously. 
it is so stinking summery and cute. Okay, anyway, um, Charmed Goods on Etsy. Um, this is a list of things for the same kid that we need to get for his dorm. And as something pops in my head, I add it to the list. If it pops in my head while I'm driving, like things always do, I will say, okay, if I know I'm gonna be home an hour from now, let's say, okay, remind me in an hour. Jack's dryer sheets and then I know that I mean he doesn't have his own dryer sheets here but I'll know that that is for the list the big list the dreaded dorm list <laughs> so as you know it depends on the project how I break them down this is a big list of um, we bought a house so these are things I need to get done for the homeowner's insurance funny thing is there are things I had like okay these are the first things we are doing anyway so <laughs> that worked out well so those will be done um things I want to do I this is from peanuts planner co I just used each for a, a separate section I want a list for the bathroom a list for outside a list for Liam's room a list for our room so in space for other lists um stuff that I had to do for the closing you know just I can pull from here based on what my monthly goals are, what my quarterly goals are. Quarterly goals determine my monthly goals. And then there are other goals for the month as well. But quarterly goals are chipped away at with the monthly goals. The monthly goals are chipped away at with weekly tasks. The weekly tasks are chipped away at on a daily basis. Okay, so the information flows from the projects into the monthly, onto the weekly, the steps for the projects are back here, or as I'm doing it this month, this is one of those challenges to myself to keep me a little more on top of my projects is keeping them on sticky notes in the month instead. This kind of serves as my hub. Then I don't go dipping into the project section unless I need something extra, or if it's a massive list. Like I'm not gonna keep this whole home list taped into my week, my monthly and move it every single month, right? Cause that's gonna take me a while to get through all that stuff. So this is part of my challenge this month. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see if I stick to these sticky notes or not. So as you can see, one thing I need is sticky notes. Another thing I need in my planner and I also really like to have, I'll be honest, this is both a want and a need is tabs. I love tabs. I love being able to go, where's the month of July? Boom, there's the month of July. Where are my projects? Boom, there are my projects. You know, where is where was my stats syllabus? There it is. Um, I love tabs. I love the way they look. I love the feeling of having things organized and tabs gives me the feeling of having things organized and easily accessible. I don't want to flip around forever looking for something. I don't want to put any brain power into thinking about where my July monthly is or, oh, it should be near this or it should be near that. I, I don't have the bandwidth for that. So I like having it. I have my weeks tab too. If I know I need to look at a certain week in March, something specific in March, I can go to March and then I only have to flip through like four pages, one for each week of March, right? So tabs, I definitely need tabs. I need it to be portable. That was a big reason. There's a very loud, I think it's a helicopter, but I'm not sure. Sorry about that. I need it to be portable. That was why I set up a pocket traveler's notebook. I carried personal rings halfway through my semester and they were getting very squished in my plant, in my backpack. My rings were getting very compacted. I was really worried about messing up my rings and it was taking up a lot of space just kind of area wise this is thicker than it well yeah this is thicker than that ring planner was so this took up more space depth wise but sitting up in the backpack I could get a lot of stuff on top of it or I could set it like this on top of everything else okay so portability I need portability from my planner I need a cover well okay maybe maybe we're tiptoeing into wants now um I I need pockets I do need pockets I need pockets to keep spare sticky notes. I need pockets to keep things that make me happy because part of my thing with my planner is it, it has to work for me, but if it doesn't make me happy, I'm not going to want to look at it, right? I have a reel on my Instagram um, page called um, like the first four minutes with my planner and I go into that about what I need in my planner to make those first four minutes in the morning that I spend purposely just enjoying my planner. Um, kind of sets the tone for my day. I will put a link to it down there if I can figure out how to do that. Um, I don't know how to link directly to a reel, so there's got to be a way. We'll find out. If I figure it out, there'll either be a card up there, a link down there, or both, okay? Um, but I, I, this was a card from um, our son who graduated from high school this year. I have, from Hey Planner Girl, I have the planner size conversion chart. Um, I have spare sticky notes back here. Um, my ruler that I use to mark off my weeks. I need pockets to hold all of that, right? I even added extra pockets up here because I had these so slam full. So I need pockets. The things that I want are pretty things. I want to be happy. 
when I open my planner. I want it to just make me happy just by looking at it. Because you know what? We all put things in our planner that we don't want to do, but we have to do, right? So we write them down because they have to get done, even though we really don't want to do them. At least enjoying where they're written <laughs> makes me happy. Maybe not so happy to have to do the things we don't want to do, but we got to get done. But at least I can do it in a pretty space while I'm tackling those things, right? So I like the pretty things. I like to have photos. I, I like to have options, right? I like to have, right now at least... I, I don't, I like not having structure in my daily area. My dailies are the daily schedule broken down by like we talked about those drop off and pick up times, day specific tasks, notes about what I did that day, journaling if I want to, if I really, really am gonna sit down in long form, right? Like I know I'm about to write lots and lots and lots of text. I don't do that in here. I have a Moleskine expanded for that. But my typical, that's not typical for me. My typical everyday journaling is in here. Um, I, I like having a place for kind of one line a day. So when I set up my break for the month, like this was when June started in my dailies, um, I use this spread just for a one line a day. Something that I appreciated, something that made me happy, um, just something that happened, things like that. I, I want that space to be able to do that. Right now for me, options and being able to do that is something I need, something my brain needs. My brain needs kind of the openness of, okay, if I need a page for something, I can turn a page, go to a blank page, I'm done. I don't necessarily set up my ringed planners in a way that I can do that. Um, and honestly, some of my traveler's notebooks too. Part of the reason I felt like I couldn't do that in previous traveler's notebook setups was because I worried about the space within an insert. These are 192 pages a piece. So I'm not overly worried right now about filling it up too much. And I think it's starting to rain on me. I thought that might happen. Um, I am skimming through my list. Oh, another thing, kind of the last thing that I want. I want a cover that feels good. I want a cover that feels good in my hand. I want leather that feels good or whatever material it's made out of. I, I personally enjoy and appreciate leather planners. Not every planner I've ever had has been leather by a long shot. Um, I, I need something that feels good in my hands, texture-wise, size-wise, weight-wise. Um, that kind of plays into portability a little bit. If it feels too big in my hand, I'm not very likely to carry it with me anywhere. Um, so that is kind of it. Those are for me, my planner needs and then my wants as a kind of little add on. Um, I think because I have had a system set up for so long, because I've used planners for so long, I sometimes have a hard time verbalizing how my system works and why it works the way it does. Because for me, it's a very natural thing, right? Because it's kind of evolved with me literally over decades, okay? So when something is just kind of naturally evolved and you enjoy playing with things like this, I personally sometimes have a hard time going back and verbalizing why I set things up the way I set things up. So I hope I was clear about why for me the flow of information is needs to be seamless, That why that's like of utmost importance to me. Um, why I set things up the way I did. And again, if you all want, we will go, and I do have some plans for this, we will go deeper into the projects, deeper into the monthly and the weekly and, and yada, yada. Um, but I just, I know that for me, when I really sat down and started going, okay, I need to make a system that works. And this was a long time ago. Um, I, I went about it a couple different ways until things started to click for me. So if this month you are trying to build a system that works for you, I know for me, I needed to identify my needs. What do I need this planner to do for me? Because this thing needs to work for me. So what do I need to do to make that happen? Um, my neighbor's here with the dog. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. Um, our, our neighbors have a dog who always likes to stop up here on the deck when he's on his walk and he sees one of us is out. So I had to say hi. Um, so I believe I left off at talking about how all of this that I talked about today pertains to building your system. When I was, when I finally realized, like I said, decades ago, okay, I, I have all this stuff, but it, it doesn't work together in a cohesive manner that takes very little brain work for me to make it work. And I need that. I went about it a couple different ways. Um, I did just get a blank notebook. I got a blank notebook that was small enough that I would carry it with me. I wrote in a couple of monthlies um, and, and went from there. And 
as I used it over the weeks, I added things and whatnot that I needed, right? I, for a while, just did like the spiral bound monthlies with weeklies in it that was, again, small enough. To, it had portability. I knew I needed portability. Um, I was a Franklin Covey girl for a long time. I loved my Franklin Covey. At the time, I was using an A5. It was a big one, maybe a classic, maybe their classic size. So in that case, I knew I needed monthlies. I knew I needed weeklies. I liked having dailies with the time bar on the side, like the timed dailies. So I bought those inserts, you know, it, I was lucky that at the time I could afford to do that. So I bought all my inserts and then I would buy the extra inserts, you know, to add in and okay, I'm not using that, take it back out. Oh, you know, I would throw some blank paper in there when I needed something that what I already had really wasn't accommodating in a way my brain liked. So I would kind of draw out my own insert and then after a while go, okay, yeah, I will consistently use this. I would find something that they had that was similar enough to what I had drawn out to work because I liked all my pages to be the same and everything. So those are kind of your options. It's identify what you know you need. Don't be afraid to put in or take out as your needs, as you learn more about your needs. Because if you take a blank book and carry it around with you, you might be surprised by things you set up that you were sure you needed that you haven't touched. Well, is that just because this specific time, maybe summertime or, you know, wintertime if you're in the Southern Hemisphere or, you know, this particular season of your life, maybe it's something you used before, but now you're not needing it anymore. So you're not using it anymore. Um, you know, give yourself things like that. Maybe give it, some people need a couple weeks. Some people need a couple months. Neither one's right or wrong, but using something to identify what those needs are because then if you want to build a system the mechanics of which is printables or you know a bound book or you know a bullet journal method type of bound book or you know a traveler's notebook or whatever that looks like like obviously this is not if you had told me even two years ago that I would take two pocket moleskines and stick them into a pocket sized traveler's notebook and I would be content beyond reason I would have told you that you read the wrong timeline <laughs> You jumped into the future and looked at somebody else's planner future because that is not something I would do. What can I say? I cannot tell you how well this is serving me and through several different things. When I say don't, maybe never say never. <laughs> <laughs> maybe but give yourself a chance give yourself a chance with a blank book or a free printables too if you don't want to make a financial investment to figure out your system you don't have to a lot of shops have free printables and then you can just fill them out as you need them right um, I know for a fact peanuts planner co has you know free printables that are really accommodating you can build quite a system solely out of freebies I also know that there are entire planner setups on YouTube entirely made of free printables. So go check those out by all means. So I hope this kind of step one is helpful um, because I know for me, that was what made things really start clicking for me was what are my needs and what are my wants? What do I absolutely need? Because if this is lacking something I need, if it has all the wants in the world I want, it really doesn't matter because it's not doing its job. So identify what your needs are first and then in the next video, we'll go from there. Thank you for choosing to spend so much time with me. Um, I have to move on to the next video. I hope you're all well, and I will talk to you again soon. I hope One Book July is going well for you. I have been so happy to see everybody's pictures and you know other types of posts, reels, and videos and whatnot on Instagram, videos on YouTube. You are all amazing. I love it. Thank you so much. Keep it up, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.